So the first question, can you describe for us your perspective on what higher education might look like in three to five years? Sure. Um, well, I, I think the, the short answer is that higher education is slow to change. So I think there's a lot of exciting visions. I think that in three to five years, we're going to start moving towards them. I'm not sure that I, I think most of these changes will be complete by then. Um, but I think a couple of the trends that we see happening in higher education, uh, the first, which I think is exciting, is there's just a general greater focus on teaching and learning and looking at what's happening with learning, looking at ways to assess it. Some of this involves the new work with learning analytics, but also looking at uh, teaching. And some of it's been coming for a long time. There's been efforts in that direction from faculty development through the scholarship of teaching and learning. And I think also uh, some of what's happened with uh, the MOOC phenomenon is um, you know, it's sort of made higher education and university teaching uh, sexy again. And I think that that's good because people are starting to re-examine what they're doing. Um, even some of the notions of the flipped classroom have gotten people excited. And so I think we see a lot more innovation and change in people who've done things the same way for a long time willing to change. So I think we're going to start to see more interactive and engaging pedagogies and people willing to experiment more. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that with the, the data revolution, we're going to see more, more transparency in what used to be a pretty closed door process. Um, you know, we went into the university, we came out four years later, we had a degree. And you know, we're going to see more, more data on what's going on in those um, years. We're going to see more data on what's going on in classes. We're going to see more data-based decision making. Um, and I think we may eventually start to see more micro-credentialing. And so instead of um, you know, a university experience producing one degree that acts as a proxy for all the knowledge you have, um, you're going to start to see people develop different skills and competencies and be able to demonstrate and provide ev evidence for those in different ways. Great. I think you hit on all the ones we believe in, the learning at scale, analytics, micro-credentialing. And it's interesting as well, we see venture capitalists now that have rarely wanted to touch education are now suddenly whether that's going to push us into that change or not, it's interesting just to see how much more engaged the, the investors are from the venture capital angel, angel investor side of things right now. Yeah, I think, that's, I think it's very exciting because I think that's where a lot of some of this change has been coming from, um, is that you're seeing interest and influence from industry that there hasn't been there before. And I think, if nothing else, it's sort of making this seem like an exciting area to, to be in. Um, not that it hasn't been exciting for some of us the whole time, but for, for other people. Um, I also, I do think there's some worries and dangers there because um, industry has a different set of interests than we do. You know, their goal generally uh, is financial, not uh, educational. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we have to be careful uh, what's going on. For example, with MOOCs, a lot of the pedagogy that you see in MOOCs, which is uh, listen to videos, uh, take some tests, um, they're quite behaviorist in nature. It's quite similar to what we were doing about you know, 40 years ago. And so I think it's exciting that industry is getting involved, but we need to have it as a partnership rather than something that's industry-led or we're going to be taking down paths that are maybe contradictory to our mission. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what do you see as the barriers that need to be addressed in order, us, in order for us to get to this future state? Um, well, I think two big barriers are uh, fear and inertia. Um, maybe that's enough of barriers as it is. Um, I, th I think it's hard to change. I do feel like there's more traction and energy around change now than there's been in a long time, so that's exciting. But there's, a, there's also a lot of fear. Change is hard, change is different. And so I think helping people see um, maybe not a utopian, but a productive rather than a dystopian future for all these technologies is, is important. And I think, um, I think that connects to, to some of what we need to do to get there, which has to do with um, getting people involved from the start. So people feel like they're part of this process and not having it done to them. So in order to overcome some of this fear and create some positive inertia, it's going to take some strong leadership skills. So what are the leadership skills or actions do you think that will be required to make this vision a reality? Um, well, I think one of, one of the most important things is what I just mentioned, which is agency and getting people involved. Uh, so it's not being done to them. They're part of it. And if we want real change in a university that's got so many different moving parts, you, you need to have teachers and instructors and designers and advisors, everybody um, feeling like they're a part of it and on board with changing their piece of the world because uh, change from, from the top that's mandated rarely results in the kind of change we, we're looking for. 
Um, I also think transparency is important. A lot of some of the things that are going on, um, especially with some of the data, is a lot of people worried about what's going to happen. And so I think being really above board with what's being done, why it's being done, and how people can help influence that process is, is going to be important. And finally, I think, I think we need people willing to take risks who are going to get out there and, and be the innovators and create hopefully positive models, but also probably find some of the, the pitfalls along the way. And um, I think that as more and more people are willing to, to take the leap of faith saying, I'm going to try something new, and I'm going to collect data so I can see how it works, and you know, in that way, make my process transparent. Um, I think that's going to help other people be able to do the same. Mm -hmm. It's like the Domino's commercial, failure's an option. <laughs> we'll end on that. <laughs> Thanks.